Millions and millions of people voted for us tonight, and uh, a very sad group of people is trying to disenfranchise that group of people. At this hour, our democracy is under an unprecedented assault, unlike anything we've seen in modern times. The voting in the 2020 U.S. election looked different due to COVID-19 restrictions. Mail-in ballots were given as an option to anyone who wanted to vote as a way to limit the amount of people at the polls. While these and other provisions were to protect citizens from COVID-19, many Republicans believe they compromised the election by making it easier for criminals to commit voter fraud. So fraud is, is, can manifest itself in, in, in numerous ways. Some of it is involving when people uh, are knowingly voting multiple times, people who vote who don't have the legal authority to vote in an election uh, and doing so knowingly, and then people who are stealing ballots and then um, voting in place of other people. Those are just some of the, the ways that voter fraud manifests itself. 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 100 years of one party rule leads to corruption of all kinds. Voter fraud is one of the biggest because that's how you keep your power. There's not widespread fraud in our elections at all, even on a local level all the way up on a national level. But we do need to make sure that we have the integrity in our system and that we also don't disenfranchise people, that we make sure that anyone who is able to vote has an opportunity to vote. The question at hand is, is was there enough fraud that would have changed the results of the election? Um, and, and that is probably at the heart of the question being asked. As technology progresses and opens doors to new means of voting, the opportunity for election fraud increases. To combat both new and old methods of voter fraud, we believe the President and Congress in 2021 should produce a national legal requirement for the identification of voters to protect the principle of federalism while making the national voting process more secure. You're going to find cases where a ballot was wrongly counted or wrongly cast or something, but that doesn't prove that the election is illegitimate because you would have to have that happening so much and it would have to be the case that 90% of those were, were hurting uh, Trump rather than Biden, rather than the likely statistical even split or relatively even split. You might see Biden slowly chip away at a Trump lead. It could be a, a, actually a somewhat large Trump lead, sort of depending on how much of the mail ballot vote we actually get in from Pennsylvania. Oh, here come these ballots. Well, we have no idea if they really are ballots. We have no idea if they're signed, if they're postmarked properly, if it isn't just the same person who submitted 100,000 ballots and they all got counted. Just because your candidate loses doesn't mean the system is broken. It's very well documented over at least the last decade, if not longer, the blue shift where because you count postal votes later, you have a red mirage and so it looks like the Republicans are ahead, but then the postal votes favor the Democrats. And you don't need to come up with a mechanism or why that's plausible. Historically, we've got evidence those two populations are different. While some of Trump's lawsuits have been granted relief, none of his lawsuits have been successful in proving widespread voter fraud as of January 20th, 2021. Despite Trump's allegations of election fraud on Twitter, there is a disconnect in his legal cases. No claims of widespread voter fraud have been made in court. Presumably, this is due to a lack of evidence. Using the legal system to contest some of the outcomes. And in that respect, which he has a right to do, but you also have a, you have to substantiate it with evidence. And he hasn't provided any evidence to show actual fraud. Now we uh, have not seen historically uh, any kind of coordinated national voter fraud effort uh, in a major election, uh, whether it's by mail or, or otherwise. And we work with our partners, particularly DOD and the mail, um, U.S. Postal Service, um, because um, when you talk about mail-in ballots, we also talk about our military and overseas people mailing their ballots back into the United States. One way to prevent voter fraud is to oversee the voting process. Despite laws allowing poll watchers to oversee the ballot counting process, many citizens were prevented from exercising this right on election night. There's about 100,000 ballots went through that process in the 20 plus hours in which they wasted his time by not allowing him to see a single ballot. Let's say I go in and I present a fake ID and I present myself as John Smith, who lives at 123 Elm Street, and I give the voter person, they find John Smith, and then they give me the ballot. 
I'm not John Smith, I'm Alan Wilson, right? I go in and I vote and then I leave. How do you go back and prove that John Smith walked in and voted for Alan Wilson? With the future uncertain and the threat of new challenges like COVID-19, protecting U.S. elections from fraud poses an increasingly greater challenge. To protect the integrity of our democracy, we call the President and new Congress in 2021 to produce a national voter ID law to make the voting process universal across all 50 U.S. states as a measure against corruption. Now, after a long night of counting, it's clear that we're winning enough states to reach 270 electoral votes needed to win the presidency. I'm not here to declare that we've won, but I am here to report when the count is finished, we believe we will be the winners.